The uh, clinical and scientific panel of the anaphylaxis campaign consists of uh, scientists and clinicians, all of whom have an interest in allergic disease and often are doing research into uh, various aspects of allergic disease, and they are providing advice and support to the anaphylaxis campaign uh, in relation to any scientific or clinical issues. If we're talking about allergy overall, it is remarkably common. That's allergy to foods or drugs or venoms or to inhalant factors like house mites, pollen, cat, dog. Uh, at least 30% of the population, maybe even more, 40%, in, in, a, in an affluent, relatively affluent community such as in the UK, will have an allergy. The number who have food allergy is, quite, is much smaller. In childhood, and that's certainly in infancy, maybe the highest figure is somewhere between 8 and 10 percent, but once you get to five, six years of age, that's gone down to about 4 percent, and in adults, maybe even lower at only 2 percent. Allergy implies an immune res hypersensitive response. In other words, the immune system has been switched on to something, whether it's a food or, or, or a drug, and when the next exposure occurs, the immune system, as it were, overreacts and produces an excessive response which leads to all the symptoms. Whereas in tolerance, we're really admitting that we don't necessarily know the exact mechanisms. Sometimes it could be immunological, but it's not quite the same uh, pattern of response as occurs with, with an acute uh, um, reaction. Or it's because the metabolic processes in the body aren't handling uh, something properly. And of course, the most common is lactose intolerance, which many people have which is a failure to be able to digest the lactose sugar and as a consequence the bacteria in the bowel then break down the lactose to lactic acid and the lactic acid causes a range of symptoms, abdominal pains, diarrhea, nausea, headaches, a whole range of symptoms. But that's not an allergy, that's because of a defect in digestion. Whereas if you're allergic to the cow's milk protein, it is the immune system that's responding to that protein and producing the problems. Anaphylaxis is the most severe form of allergic reaction, which can be to a wide range of factors, to an insect venom uh, reaction, to wasp or bee, or to foods or to medications. And it produces um, a whole range of symptoms, starting with an itchy rash known as urticaria or hives, swelling of the tissues around the lips and the eyes and sometimes elsewhere in the body known as angioedema. And if that angioedema occurs at the back of the throat, then it can cause difficulty in swallowing and cause um, problems with breathing, even to the point of causing complete obstruction, or if it's lower down in the airways in the lung, producing an asthmatic reaction. And at its very worst, because so much fluid floods out of the circulation, the blood pressure falls, people will become faint and even go unconscious. And it is therefore, at its very worst, a life-threatening reaction. If we're talking about the most common allergies to cause anaphylaxis, urticaria or angioedema, in children it's overwhelmingly foods. And the league table of foods starts with peanuts and tree nuts, milk, egg, sesame, wheat, kiwi fruit. But in adults, it's more likely that it's either due to medications, and that's really the commonest cause of severe reactions, or uh, a wasp or bee sting. Mostly, unfortunately, we're having to treat the symptoms more than the root cause. So if someone is potentially at risk of anaphylaxis, we have to give them rescue treatment that will deal with the anaphylactic reaction and prevent it from progressing. And the most important treatment there is adrenaline, which has to be given by injection sub into the muscle. Uh, and there are now very nice auto-injectors that take some of the pressure off people to actually put the needle in. The needle is fired in automatically once they uh, press the trigger. 
Um, and that's the most important treatment during an anaphylactic reaction. We can give antihistamines to deal with some of the minor symptoms, the, the itching, uh, the urticaria and runny nose and sneezing. Um, and then the other treat, and of course the other treatment is to avoid whatever it is that's causing the reaction. There is one other thing that we, we need to emphasize. Uh, one situation where we have found that there is a higher risk of having a more severe reaction to a food or a drug or, or, or an insect sting is having coexistent asthma that is not being well treated. And so there is an absolute imperative in anybody who has asthma as well that that asthma is well treated and that they take the regular preventer inhalers and not just reliever inhalers to make sure that all the inflammation down in the lungs is under control. Then that reduces the chance of having a severe reaction if they're accidentally exposed to an allergen which might otherwise produce a severe reaction. I wish I could say that I know exactly what distinguishes mild from severe. Can I predict someone who has already had a bit of a reaction, will they have a more severe reaction in the future or a milder reaction? Sadly, I have to say at the moment we cannot accurately predict how severe a reaction will be. We can say who is allergic and what they are allergic to based on doing appropriate tests. and then all we can say is that if you have a big dose of the allergen, you're more likely to have a more severe reaction. If you have the reaction at the same time as you've got a re an infection, it might be more severe, or if you exercise very heavily afterwards, that will make a more severe reaction. But beyond that, we have to say we don't know, and therefore we have to take precautions to make sure that all the right treatment's available The most important developments in relation to food allergy have been food manufacturers becoming much more aware of this as a real issue that they have got to address. And I think now with the greater awareness there's better labelling and I think for, for the future also better processes to make sure that foods can be uh, uh, reasonably assured of being free of, of, of the major food allergens. But of course for the long term future what we're looking to is not just dealing with the symptoms but actually switching off the whole process. I think we have a much better chance in the short term for preventing allergy developing in the first place than we are of curing allergy. But there are some exciting new developments as we understand more about the immune response and how to modify it that I think a time will come when we will be able to reduce food, uh, many of these allergies very considerably or even switch them off completely.